All right, good morning to all of you once again. Let's start this morning MEO right now. Um, let me put on my screen and we can start off. Okay, here we go. Okay, all right, so 4th of March, 2021, today is Thursday and today's caption is Handenberg Omen Signal again. All right, so apparently it's all right <clears throat> if you are with me for some time. I did ever cover this little thing before and I remember that when I covered this, it was back in December 2019. Um, yeah, all right, 2019, December when I covered this particular topic. And of course, back then itself, that time when I covered this, it was basis on the market would be probably coming down. But the thing is, the market didn't come down, it went even higher. Now, back then itself, right, I, re I really recall that I make a mistake, all right? Now I recall I make a mistake, is that Handenberg Omen doesn't mean that it will happen immediately. Now, usually, apparently, based on what I just read again this morning, there is a one month plus uh, duration before the real movement comes in, apparently. So if that time in December 2019, when I covered that story, right, I did not include that one month period. So theoretically, if you look at it now on hindsight, eh, that means that one month later in January, around you know, mid of January, that was where the market actually peaked. Then February, then the market really came off before it sell down all the way to March. All right, so of course, uh, I'm not trying to you know, cover my tracks. I'm just informing you that, okay, I was technically wrong in December 2019, but I was actually right when the market really came off in the February and March period. So the problem is, will this actually happen again? So I don't know. So let's take a look at what I had to offer for you today, this morning, all right? So once again, guys, uh, welcome to, to this MAO. There will be a lot of... Um, financial information to share with you. So if you are a little bit uh, dry, just apologize on that, okay? Now, this is my chart that I drawn for you guys over this period of time. And of course, uh, some of you uh, really get into quite serious with this. Some of you all send me your own drawing, in fact. So I'm not going to say who's right, who's wrong. If you are correct, I'm happy for you. If let's say you don't get it correct, it's uh, understandable. No one can predict the future, right? So the thing is this, okay, now the, if let's say we're talking about the Handenberg effect coming in right now, okay, then we talk about a month later, a month later, that will be in April, right, in April month, this is April, then the effect actually comes in. Then, of course, if that is the case, there's two sides of the coin. One, the market continue to go up all the way until April, then the market take a breather. Two, the market basically you know, go down to April and then after that, go into a accelerated selling until then, okay? That is if, let's say, the Handenberg effect really comes in, okay? So I'm not going to say that which one would be the better one. I don't know. No one would know, all right? Just like that. now we have one more information for us to take note of the market, all right? Of course, not everybody will understand what's Handenberg effect, right? So later on, I'll explain to you. I actually do a bit of screenshot for you for you to take notice, to take note of that, okay? But still, in my personal opinion, if you look at it, right, every time when it comes to this, uh, this uh, so-called 172 days period, okay, all right, that is usually a potential turning point. So the last time we saw something like this, you can see over here, back then, uh, this is what happened. And before that, you know, that was where the market went out a bit before coming off heavily back in this uh, Feb, uh, February 2020. Then, of course, we also saw this recovery, a strong upside in the market later on before it come off. So that was back in October 2020. So will this be uh, uh, another potential turnaround in during the April the 30th on during uh, April 30th? Well, we let the market decide, okay? So traders, you just um, at least take this as a reference guide lah, and you see whether or not what I say so and what really happened would it actually make sense of it. Okay, so this is my personal take of the market right now. Okay. All 
All right. So this Handenberg, in fact, omen, right, basically comes from, you know, like the unfortunate event whereby the uh, hot air balloon basically caught fire and quite a few people perished during that day itself. So basically, people be using this as a way to tell traders that that would be a potential uh, market sell off. Okay, I would use a crash, like more market sell off in the time to come, especially if let's say the market loses some key important support level. So all I'm saying this is I'm just bringing it up because apparently now the statistics actually shows that there is this particular uh, signal ongoing, all right, in the market. So interestingly, in 2011, we have Occupy Wall Street. Now, 2021, we have Enter Wall Street. So apparently, you saw, right, you can see back then in 2011, okay, whereby everybody was so upset with the uh, all the Wall Street guys because of the Lehman crisis. And of course, the way they handled it was terrible. A lot of bonds was evaporated overnight. And, you know, many many people was not responsible, was responsible, was responsible for the sell-off, but no one basically got hit. <laughs> right. In fact, it were the people who went on the street making noise were the one who went in jail. So that is why you see interesting 10 years later, back then everybody was also entering the market. I mean, it was basically going to Wall Street to make noise. Now, 10 years later, everybody is going berserk buying shares and stuff. So over here, you can see that right. this guy is a farmer in a way. He said, yeah, I tried that once before. And of course, he has a broken arm. And this guy is swinging himself all the way and the stock market is rising and being happy. But you can see that the, what I'm trying to say is that the actual uh, earning value is actually at the bottom. So what I'm trying to say is the market now is going up because everybody's in enjoyment. But in fact, it's not right. When you do something like this with no safety net, usually you will get to hurt yourself. So, you know, as long as you're going up, no problem. No one will say you're wrong. But when you come down, it's all right, you get hurt. So that is what is too cartoon or trying to say uh, or what I'm trying to explain to you guys in my personal view, all right? So before we start this morning, let's motivate one another. Great things take time. Obviously, we believe that that's why we are building this. We are borrowing arrows every day from the gold market. We are borrowing some arrows from the Hang Seng. We're borrowing some, some arrows from the Dow Jones. And of course, we've been borrowing quite a bit from NASDAQ, apparently. Because I've been telling you guys yourself, right? As long as the 10-year yields goes higher, the NASDAQ will be coming down. And yesterday, the NASDAQ went below 13,000 for the first time for a few uh, weeks already. And this is not actually a very good sign. So remember this, um, one of the very famous, one of the very, very veteran uh, news commentator, right? Art Cushion. All right. He also says that the uh, the NASDAQ cannot go below 13,000. So apparently the psychological level is being breached. Now, some people will say that this is a buying opportunity because now it's, it broke it, but it should be a good buy. So of course you can buy. Now tonight, this uh, Jerome Powell will be speaking. So obviously he'll try his best to talk down the whole thing again. He may, as he talked, he may artificially manipulate the market. So we won't know. Let's just take a look and see what happened tonight, okay? The beautiful thing about learning is nobody can take it away from you. So since you learn it from us, obviously you use the, all the sales skill set to make yourself richer, make yourself you know, in a more comfortable position. I really hope that you guys have been doing this for yourself at the end of the day. So before we start this morning, MAO, once again, do note, okay, all trading decisions has to be borne by you. All right, end of the day, I cannot be responsible nor liable for your winning or your losses. All right, and also please check your current financial condition. Okay, cool on that. Let's continue. So what happened? I told you guys the ADP number will be the very interesting number to watch out for. And very surprising, the ADP numbers on uh, yesterday only came in 117,000, way, way below the 225,000 jobs, okay? So apparently it's all right. Now, because now when this happened, it's all right. It tells immediate reaction that, hey, making market, that means that the Federal Reserve is still correct. The employment is not there yet. So they can still continue to, you know, continue to put more money into the system, right? So when this news came out itself, right, it's a bit of both sides. One, one part is telling you that the economy is not that fantastic, despite all the money put it in. But the market look prefer look at it this way now. With the, the jobs are not there yet, there is a good reason for the Fair Reserve to continue pumping money. But the thing is this, the yield curve is still going, the yields are still going higher. So now become a very, uh, in a very uh, difficult 
position? Is that which side should the market really focus on? Is it the not so good economy or the rising inflation? Or is it the federal have to taper and stuff like that? So despite this, uh, people all looking at a better number, the number came out so low. So the question will be, will that be the same thing for the non-farm payroll? which is coming tomorrow, right? And uh, based on what I'm seeing now, right, it is possible. Now, no farm payroll, they're also looking at a pretty high number. So there's a likelihood the number may be lower. But if the market is lower, if the numbers are lower and still the yield goes higher, that means that the market now is focusing on other things. And this could actually spell further trouble for many uh, for the stock market. So traders, you need to watch out for this. That's tomorrow, 9.30 p.m. for the U.S. non-farm payroll. Now, yesterday I covered about this, uh, uh, about this concern about this Joe Biden, right? Then apparently itself, right? Joe Biden itself, you know, himself, right, come in and slam the governors because apparently saying that, right, they have this uh, Netherlands, Net, <laughs> Neanderthal, all right, basically meaning the, the the species that you know the olden time you know people, all right. Apparently itself is saying that right, these guys don't think properly, all right, <laughs> in a way. So apparently itself, the, the two two governors, Texas one and uh, Mississippi, was actually Republican. So now I explain why lah, because back then itself, when Donald Trump was the president, uh, he was not you know he was basically not advocating putting on masks and apparently mm -hmm. still want to push for the economy to open up and so that's why it makes sense for the Texas and Mississippi governors to do and go against it so of course uh, Joe Biden was pretty pissed he said that right it's a big mistake and in a way he actually quoted this that they are not thinking it right and of course uh, we have also this uh, the experts are huh, saying that right okay this is getting worried because if more states roll back to you know uh doing such a thing as well right this could actually create more problem in fact it's all right the variant is on still spreading and in fact it's all right health official warns that we could have fourth covid wave with early easing of restrictions now i mean i lost track of how many waves of uh, covid we have la, but the point is this I did say yesterday, what is my biggest concern is that we may not have seen the big one yet. And of course, I really hope that the vaccination really worked. All right, time check now is 9.13. I know that we're going to have Hang Seng opening up very soon. So I'm going to rush back into the market right now to let you take a look at the Hang Seng. Okay, so let's look at Hang Seng right now. Now, this is the Hang Seng chart. Okay, Hang Seng chart here. Uh, we have a BMB the previous day, so I'm going to bring it down for you. Okay, that's a BMB, and the MA today is also very nearby the BMB level, so that means that uh, we should have a uh, interesting uh, resistance at twenty nine thousand six hundred and eighty four. That is for the Hang Seng. All right, that means the resistance is twenty nine thousand six hundred eighty four. If the market goes up there and pulls back, there could be some selling. Now, of course, today we do expect that the Hang Seng to gap down this morning, definitely for sure, for what happened overnight in the Dow Jones. So the MLP will definitely be watched today. The MLP is 29,334. Okay, so the few numbers watch out for. Uh, it's going to open right now. Let's do go to live to see the uh, market for today. Hang Seng is going to open up soon. There we go. All right, Hang Seng. Okay, Hang Seng will open up. Let's take a look at Hang Seng now. Okay, Hang Seng has uh, gap down to 29,388. All right, yesterday closed at 29,529. This morning gaps down to 29,388. Not a lot, uh, not really enough to my opinion. So basically what's happening right now, Hang Seng opening price is between the two pivots again. So as long as Hang Seng stays above OP, generally there will be some upside la for Hang Seng. But because the KSI is red in color, right, I'm not that comfortable to buy into Hang Seng. So if Hang Seng go to KTR plus one to KTR plus three, anytime between these three levels, then any CCYR, I'll be looking towards the sell than a buy. All right, so this is a strategy that I will prefer to handle on okay so if the market if hang seng goes up though to ktr plus one two plus three it'll be a good time to look out for selling signal all right if hang seng broke below op then definitely for sure right 29,296 it will be the 
uh, key resistance, I mean, support for Hang Seng. And if the Hang Seng grow below that, that will be likelihood it may come down to the midpoint here itself. Okay. So let me just uh, go through the flow one more time for you guys to remember. Okay, first of all, I believe that Hang Seng today, basically based on an OP price now, Hang Seng, if it goes up, okay, it may face resistance. All right, where you go to KTR plus one to KTR minus one, uh, KTR plus one to plus three, there will be some resistance there. And if Hang Seng breaks below opening price, the first support will be 29,296 level. That is the pivot two. And if the Hang Seng really goes down further, then there is a possibility for the Hang Seng to uh, go down to this 29,090 level. I repeat myself, there is a chance for Hang Seng to go down to 29,090 level, okay? So let's see what my view will be correct. All right, if as long as um, the Dow stays above the current price of 31,200 level, it's still okay. But shall the Dow Jones goes below 31,200, then likelihood, okay, Hang Seng might be traveling down towards the 29,090 level. Okay, so traders, I hope that this will be effective for you and hopefully you guys will be able to capture this run. Okay, cool, huh? Okay. All right, so that is the uh, Hang Seng chart. All right, show you live right now. Okay, let's take a look at continue what we share. Okay, so what happened is that although last week, right, we saw a little bit movement on the uh, NASDAQ, apparently more funds came in after a re slight rebound back then, right? So more funds came in uh, near record level. Apparently, right, more funds came in into the uh, up, in, in, uh, up innovation. All right, basically it has his second biggest inflow ever on Friday, which is last Friday. So apparently it's all right, another $464 million came in. Wow. That is after the fund was down by 15%. And now the thing is this, more people come in. So, you know, in the point is that it's just like telling, you know, Caddy Wood is that don't worry guys, you down buy more, down buy more. So this is the thing that was happening right now. But you do you know that after yesterday's sell off, right, the actual ETF now is down by 20%. Yes, it's actually at the bear territory. So I'm not too sure what will happen next. But of course, there's another side of the coin because some people say that right now we put in more money. When the $1.9 trillion go into the system itself, then of course the whole market will go higher and all these counters will go through the roof. So this is what the optimism is going going. Now, I really hope that Cathy would know what she's doing. She herself said that there will be some turbulence in 2021. But on, a, on a, the other note itself, right, I felt that her buying recently had been quite reckless. So I'm not too sure who what to say because I'm not anyway her friend. I just hope that, right, with all the money given to her, it should be done properly, all right? If not itself, right, things can go pretty bad because in year 2000 itself, we saw something else. I did not show you to you another fund that basically did the same thing back in year 2000 before the NASDAQ crashes. So I just hope that all goes well because the bond yield will definitely be the one punishing the uh, technology counters, all right? As long as the bills keep on going higher, there is no way the tech share will be going any higher. So this is something that you must watch out for, okay? So let's just see and uh, we let's just monitor this closely, all right? Because if up innovation, this ETF goes down, it will spread a wildfire across the board, okay? This is something that I am quite sure will likely happen. So that's why Michael Burry, remember this guy? He said that, right, the, to short Tesla and Tesla shares really came off. Let me bring you Tesla share right now, Tesla. Okay, Tesla, where are you, Tesla? Here we go. Now this is Tesla share. Look at it. Tesla has been coming off. All right. Basically, uh, you can see back then when Tesla was trading about um, this uh, 800 level, I was telling you guys to exit Tesla because um, we saw that it broke below the 866 level. That was a very powerful uh, TSCB level where I told you guys when the Tesla failed to hold above the TSCB at 866, then I was looking at Tesla to fall further and indeed Tesla came down. And of course, you got the KSI, all the way the KSI shows that the boys have been selling from the moment they started trading. So now Tesla has been coming down strongly, okay? And yesterday you can see the closing was pretty bad. After it loses the uh, pivot two at 683, Tesla share came down all the way and closes near the day low. So I suspect that Tesla, there should be some intermittent uh, recovery about 643 level. 
643 level, that is a KCP. Now, if I say anyone really want to buy Tesla, we look at what happened previously here, right? Back then itself, right, 628, it's a level to watch, if not uh, 631. So traders, if you want to do a little pun here itself, and you don't think that Tesla is going to go down lower, then 628, 631, 643, these three levels, you can consider to put some position around there and hope and hope that the market will touch and rebound. And this is what happened, okay? So on the flip note itself, right? Let's say we, we're talking about this. If Caddy Wood is gonna buy more Tesla, then this was the day whereby Tesla hit the low and then went up, right? This was the day. So let's say Caddy Wood come back in again and do the same thing, the same magic. Then of course, 628, 631, 643 will be the level that, you know, be watching out for. So allow me to repeat myself once again for this um, Tesla here. So back then itself, we told you Tesla would be a sell below 800. It really came down, down $150 already. Now, basically what happened that time when um, on this day, uh, on the 23rd of February, Tesla share went down all the way. Then it triggered my all my KCB level, all right, and then rebounded strongly. So these three numbers, 643, 631, 628 are the three levels that the market triggered and rebounded, okay? So these are all the KCB level that we have arrived long time ago. And of course, after that, the, the Tesla share went up. So this time around, with Kelly Wood have more money in her, in her kitty now. And now Tesla share had come back down again. If let's say Caddy Wood is going to buy, so these three levels will be something that she'll be looking out for, right? Probably. So traders, today you know what to do, all right? With these three, three levels, all right? But of course, if the market breaches 643, 631, 628 and still going to go down, oh, then that will be terrible because the next milestone will be at 200, 600 level, all right? Traders, make sure you know your risk reward may show, huh? Okay, thanks. So that is uh, for Tesla, all right? Today, I mean, jumping in with charts and stuff, you know, it'd be very boring for you. So basically, Michael Burry says that, right, the governments may handicap Bitcoin. And I suspect that it is possible because you must understand that now currencies, fiat currencies are actually under a little bit of threaten here about threat, okay? So now more and more people are using the cryptocurrency now to basically exchange for stuff. And of course, you know, when a country can, the only thing that can control people in a country is actually the money. So if let's say the government lose the money control, it technically lose the people control. So that's why it is a possibility that, right, governments will come in together to do some handicapping of this this uh, cryptocurrency. But of course, uh, Michael Burry says that he don't think that the cryptocurrency can disrupt the financial system, which I cannot agree. All right, but he says that this is a speculative bubble and it is actually very uncertain. So end of the day is this, the keyword is, he's saying that, right, okay, this is, the, this is something that you must watch out for, right? This thing can go really wrong if the thing exploded in the wrong way. All right, so that's what Michael Burry concerns for. So for me as well, right, I know recently there is an ongoing conspiracy rumor about how Bitcoin is really being created and who is the real creator of this Bitcoin. Now, uh, I pretty like the conspiracy theory because it makes a lot of sense in a way. But of course, as usually a conspiracy theory itself, you won't get any answer. You can only speculate, you know, you may only just uh, make you... It just maybe wet your appetite, maybe just make you feel sh good about it, but it doesn't serve any good purpose. So guys, if you think that you want to know more about how Bitcoin is in a conspiracy theory manner, uh, watch out for this um, next Tuesday, okay? Next Tuesday, I will do a special segment, all right, to talk about the Bitcoin conspiracy act, okay, next Tuesday. So if you guys uh, want to watch that one, watch out for Tuesday, okay? That's going to be pretty cool. All right. All right. So now the thing is this. I want to bring you back again. Now, this has really happened a week, one week ago. I know that it's old news, but I want you to do, to recall, all right, recall and go extend your understanding here. Now, remember last Thursday, okay? Last Thursday is all right when the bond market just kept selling. Because why? Apparently, it's all during last Thursday during the auction. Apparently, there was no buyers. There was full of sellers. There were no buyers there. And straight away, that causes the bond price to slam down and yields shoot up 1.6%. And of course, that immediately caused a ripple effect to the financial market. The question is this, how come there were no buyers? Apparently, it was a complete dry out of risk appetite in the fixed income space, as mentioned, right? Meaning, basically, people doesn't want to come in anymore. 
Now, why is that so? Because people are getting worried, probably, or people just don't think that this will work. All right. So there's this ongoing thingy. I won't use. It. I don't think it's the right term, but it does have the closest relationship itself. It's a Ponzi. All right. <laughs> apparently, so apparently this. This Ponzi has been going on for a long, 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 long while. So every time they borrow money from somebody, so they use this money to do something or pay off the other person. All right, in a way. So what is happening right now is that apparently now people know that something is wrong somewhere, and rather than giving it continuously, they don't want. So that is the reason why now the bond prices coming down, and the only way to attract back the bond. Traders in and out is to basically allow the yield to go higher. So that's why the the spread start to open up itself, and that caused a concern. So either that is the inflation or it's a roaring economy, but nonetheless itself, right? The bond traders are getting very uh, worried, okay, in a way, and that basically contributed to the massive treasury sell-off. So now the problem is this: is there any more money available in the system? Because if let's say they do not roll this money. All right, then there will be a problem. Just like you do credit card facility, you roll over to cover your bills and stuff. It's very normal, right? So imagine now suddenly one of the credit card credit card companies doesn't allow you to roll, and you actually needed all this to continue your day to day function where you pay the interest. So this is what is actually now catching the attention of many traders. Okay, so you can see right now itself, right? Apparently. If that is to continue, the Federal Reserve may really have to tighten the policy to make sure that you know uh, to reduce the price from surging higher, the yields are from surging higher. So the evaporation of buyers and the new rush of new supply is really causing the real concern for the seven-year Treasury notes. Okay, this is the more to the in-depth side. So apparently, itself right now it has become a problem. All right, since it's a um, reintroduction in 2009. The yield went much higher, and this causes a bit of concern. So now the thing is this: the primary dealers, okay, who are left to take up the unsold bonds, which has responsibility now, is to go into the market and then push the yield higher to get rid of the bond. Now this is very very scary because normally it's a very easy thing to do. But now because there's no buyer, they don't motivate the price higher, the yield higher to bring in people in. That is very scary, and that's why. If this gonna continue, which is today, there's another round. If I say they're gonna continue again, then this is gonna be very, very um, detrimenting. All right. So this is from zero zero H. She says that right, the treasury cash balance, okay, is down by thirty eight billion as of yesterday. Left about one point four trillion dollars. So if by this will continue by the next end of next one, okay, there is a possibility that right they may lose another six hundred and sixty three. Billion dollars. That means that there will be a crazy deficit, in I mean crazy downside lah, reduce reduction on the treasuries. And if this is going to happen, and they need the money from treasury to do to help the economy, then that is going to be a problem here because now where to find the money, right? So unless Federal Reserve is going to pump in so much more money, and what Zlatan say, maybe the Federal Reserve had to pump in as much another one trillion dollar into the system. Then of course, then that will depreciate the dollar even harder, and then what will happen? It will cause an immediate reaction to the inflation. So now it become a checkmate. So apparently, I'm telling you that there's a potential that Federal Reserve is in a checkmate position because now there's a problem because one of the participants is not going to continue. Hence, therefore, it could cause a big problem, massive jam at certain area, and when that happen itself, to print or not to print will become a problem. So of course, to me itself, the best way to look at it, right, is to draw away to make the stock market not as um, good or make it riskier to involve. Then you may attract the funds from the stock market back to the bonds market, and that will change the current outlook. It is possible. So that's why from here itself, I do suspect that right, the recent selling in the market is because traders are looking at it from this point of view. Hence, therefore, they are not that. Uh, keen to participate in a bond market, they rather take the money back in cash and wait out for a while. This is what I'm personally seeing now. All right, so the next topic here itself is the Hindenburg Omen, right? So obviously it's all right. This Hindenburg Omen is actually a technical indicator that was designed to signal the increased probability of a stock market crash. Okay, this is from this uh, Wikipedia. All right, so it's actually comparing. The percentage of the new 52 weeks high stocks versus the new 52 weeks low stocks, and when that thing comes with the percentage itself, right? Apparently, it does seem to have a little bit co-relationship to the stock market. And apparently, it's all right. The first time, okay, it's actually named after the Hindenburg um, airship that they crashed in May 1937. 
All right, so let me explain to you how it works as well, right? So you can see the red lines are all the Hindenburg effect. But you can see that, you know, you can say that, well, Cal, this is like the, uh, the, the boy who cried wolf eventually itself, right? A broken clock will be right eventually. Uh, yes, indeed, you do see that, right? There were many times the Hindenburg effect do ring, but the market extended its upside until a while then before the pullback. So of course, in a way, uh, where we are, what we are seeing now, we are just owning the, like, the first time after many, many months. So is that a concern? Well, if you look at it back then in year 2019 to year 2020, uh, it happened about four or five times before the market really sell off. So again, it's not an immediate effect. So uh, to make it simple, let you understand is basically, uh, I'm going to explain this to you is that uh, these are the four main thing is the new high, new low. The 52 weeks high cannot be more than twice the of the 52 weeks uh, low. So, and of course in the MCO indicator called the uh, Michelin uh, oscillator has to be negative. So basically in short, if I look at this example, it'll be easier to understand. Huh? All right, so basically what I'm trying to say is, all right, assume there is about 156 counters of the 334 issues, okay? Right, these are at the hot 52 weeks high, and let's say now 86 of them is at the low. So you take 156 high divided by the total, okay, you get a yield of 4.6 percent. Then you take the 86 there is the, the low versus by the total issue, you get 2.53. So basically, right, because the, the two result is greater than this particular 2.2, that's so this is the potentially this is the average figure. So when this happens itself, right, usually the market will come off. So that means that when the market go extended itself, when the upside is extended, the downside is also extending at the same time, and these two numbers is more than 2.2%, normally the market likely will come off, all right? So apparently this is actually happening because now what you're saying is that although the stock market is rising every single day, but actually there's also stock that's actually going down at the same time. So that's why now become a rising concern. That means that the divergence is there in the market, all right? Hopefully you guys can understand what am I trying to explain here itself. It's not that easy to understand. I can understand it, but, but if you want to dig further, you can go online and read up or go to some YouTube channel to watch a simpler version, those three to five minute explanation that will help you a lot. But my point is this, what I'm trying to say is that it will not have immediate impact. So don't worry, usually it's time delay. It'd be time delayed by one month to even two months or even three months, but usually about one month plus, okay? So all clear on this, if you're all clear, all right, can you guys uh, key the word OMEN, O-M-E-N, O-M-E-N into the group chat so that I can take a water break. And I also hope that you guys have uh, heard me loud and clear right now, okay? All right, by keying into it that's to, like, to just make sure that you guys are actually hearing me so I won't be bored. I also can feel that you guys are actually listening to me a bit. And of course, it's self-reminding you guys about what you may anticipate or what may happen in one month to come. All right, so there are more charts today and you can see a lot of other stuff. Okay, so I'm not going to freak you out by telling you that the market will crash, but I'm just informing you that this is what shall happen, right? So there were a few instances where the Hindenburg Altman came in and apparently when it happened itself, right, the market does have almost instant reaction, okay? So apparently this is not from me. This is from one of the, uh, from Zero H. They actually put this up. So there were four, um, this Hindenburg Altman, but of course there's only one bigger one movement that was back in 2018, September movement, another one was the Wuhan virus. So back then this was a repo operation. This was because of the Wuhan virus. So apparently now this is the new one now. Now we are seeing it here. Okay, so the question is this, are we going to have a big movement? So um, if you look at it now, right, whenever this happened, the volume itself is also uh, pretty high, which is actually you can see over there is a rising volume. So all I can say is that we also have rising volume recently. So maybe we have a bit of concern factor here. And of course, this is the ratio now. You can see that this is the ratio between the New York Stock Exchange low ratio and high ratio. So apparently we are seeing that same discrepancy here. 
And of course, the, uh, the MCO indicator is also in the negative zone. So apparently all this seem to be coming in together. So, but of course, the question is, is this for sure? Is that going to be only this is going to be different now? No one knows because since we have Fair Reserve on the site, who knows Fair Reserve may just change this totally itself. Okay, I'm just informing you, that's all. But what is very clear is that the FANG stock have really came off. I do you guys avoid FANG stocks. Apparently for the last two months, I've been saying that the FANG stock most likely be coming down. And obviously you can see the FANG stock is all coming down straight down. Likely will cover the gap here. So the gap itself is another few more days of downside. So when that happened, maybe for people who want to buy cheap, cheap, you may consider to go into the market. But at the moment now, you can consider not to do that. Um, yesterday, I did a very short segment on using the 5% rule. It's already available. The video instant replay is on our this current uh, trade with the voice revision Facebook group. All right, if you miss it, go and take a look at itself. Uh, this will be helpful because you use a 20% marker, the 5% marker to know what's the next level the market will be going. So give you an example. Let me bring an example right now. Okay, give a short one. Okay. Um. Okay, so example like Facebook, right? Give you a quick one, Facebook. Okay, all right. So Facebook, okay, basically you can see that Facebook now, if you look at your screen, maybe you cannot see very clearly. Uh, never mind, let me just show it to you. Now, basically, I uh, one of my very good senior, uh, he has created a new indicator for us. Okay, that is basically using the 5% uh, rule. So basically, you, you can see on your screen right now. Okay, let me just do this for you. Okay, this is the 95% mark, 90 and 85 and the 80 level. So you can see that now, whenever the market basically does this, if the market cannot go above 95, it will likely pull back to 90. And if it cannot stay above 90, it will go down to 85. And of course, recently Facebook misses the 80% by a fraction and rebounded all the way strongly. But again, recently you can see Facebook loses at 90% and yesterday it loses itself at 85%. So from that itself, we can roughly gauge, gauge that later on Facebook might be testing here, which is about 243 level for the market. All right, apology outside now, my house having some renovation work. So there'll be a bit lot of noise at the moment. Apology on that. But nonetheless itself, right? Okay, guys, look at the KSI, look at the way it's going on. And of course, yesterday, the, uh, the day before, it was a BNB on Facebook. So... I believe that right, whenever the stock shares, those blue chip counter come down to near the 20% level, whereby traditionally traders will tell you that this is going to be a bearish incident. So normally they'll be buying. So I suspect that when Facebook come down to about 243 near there, around there, there will be some buying again. So unless the market really turns super bearish, then the market crash down to 243. If not, I suspect that there will be some buying when markets near 243 level. Okay, so this indicator is how it's called ATH indicator. It will be available for all students probably next week. But only way to have this is how you must be an active subscriber. Then we'll give it to you as a free gift for this year, 2021. Right, it's a free gift. So which means that you just have it. There's no time duration on this itself. It's given to you as long as you are an active subscriber. Okay, so you must be an active subscriber like, for you to turn on. Okay, so if you have it, you know, you, uh, as long as you're actively using our system, this will be uh, turned on for you, all right? Of course, this will only be available and useful for US stock that's at all-time high, NASDAQ, Dow Jones, S&P. For Forex, it doesn't much make sense because Forex now, many of them are off the all-time high. So not really useful for Forex trader, but for stock trader, for indices trader, mm, this one will be quite useful, okay? So more details will be out next week to let you have it, all right? If not, you can just do on your own, all right? And just do more work, do the 5% rule, you actually can get it done. Okay, cool. All right. So this is the ARC uh, ETF and you can see that's the reason why there's a concern right now. Apparently, the ARC ETF is now near at 
near or somewhere below the 20% level. So of course, we do suspect that there might be some buying up. So maybe they will use their funds to push up the market again or gather all their traders in to go and buy the market, all right? Maybe today, tomorrow, just to make sure that it stay above the 20% level. But uh, if it fail, then there will be some trouble. There will be some trouble. So traders, I will think that, right, maybe when ARK ETF go down to, 20, to the 25% level, you can consider to look at all the technology shares. Who knows, they may actually bottom out at the same time. So you heard me, uh, I'm not calling for sell in total. I'm telling you that if the market for ARK ETFs goes down to 25% level and it stays there, this could signify that they may go have they may go in to buy some technology share who maybe have reached the 20% mark. All right, so it's a great opportunity to look into the market. All right, so um, let me just show you something very important like this um, Amazon, a quick one, sorry, jumping around. So you can see that Amazon yesterday also sold off. And if you look carefully, Amazon, all right, breaches the 85% level. So likely, la, Amazon might be also going down to the... 80% level, right? So, you know, let me just bring the chart a little bit smaller for you guys. You can see right now. Okay, let me just squeeze the chart a bit. Can you see this better now? Uh, this is a better one. You see that? So Amazon high was here. And then the last time Amazon, when it was plunging back in September uh, last year, it came down all the way. It hit our beautiful KCB level at 288.4 and immediately it rebounded all the way up itself, right? But after that, when it loses again a 95% level, it went down to the 80, uh, 90% and stopped at 85. And 85, it stops there, it recover again. But this time around, it came from 95, bridges to 90, and now close below the 85 mark. So again, uh, my personal take is this, this seems to be in the direct movement. So I suspect that there will be some artificial support there before we test the... Uh, the level here. So the level here is 288.4 for Amazon. So traders who like to buy Amazon share, you may watch out for this because the last time the KCB, the market reached that, it perfectly rebounded off from there. And um, the next level that is the 80% level, that's 280.2837. So there are two levels for you to look at Amazon, 288.4 or 2837. Okay. So let me just repeat myself once again. So I record it down. All right, so for Amazon traders, uh, if Amazon continue to go down further, Amazon may go down to 288.4. That is the first level that it may get some support because it happened before, uh, whereby the market rebounded exactly off that, that level there back in uh, September last year. If not, if the market really bridges 288.4, the next level, that's an 80% level, that is 2837, which I suspect that that will be the low for this round, okay? I suspect that that will be the low for this round. So from where we're seeing now, the Amazon shares at $3,008. So that's about $160 more downside like, to go before Amazon actually may find a support, okay? So traders, you just have to uh, remember this. Of course, do some research in your own opinion. And then of course, trade according to plan. So you can do the selling first and do the buy up later. Or can wait for the selling to complete to buy it from the bottom. Okay, all clear on this? All right, all clear. Thank you. If you are clear, guys, give me a thumbs up. All right, so at least I know that you guys are hearing me, okay? Okay, so <clears throat> that is the sharing on Amazon because recently the US share, a lot of traders are actually getting involved in this. So I rather spend more time telling you about this. Okay, so what happened to the Dow Jones <clears throat> yesterday? It was again a very lackluster day, very slow, very boring, and there were no, absolutely no movement. It was until the last half an uh, last hour we saw the selling came in. I was awake at 4 a.m., so I was watching the Dow Jones, and it was suddenly the market just boom came off 100 points. So again, is this a, a concern? Is this a factor to take note of? Well, I do say that because normally closing before end, if the closing is not that that strong, usually there will spill over into the Asian period. And in the Asian period, they try to recover a little bit where it's on technical ground. And then after that, they sell out again in the US time. Overall, it may not be that chirpy for the positive side, okay, for the bulls. Huh? So what happened is that for the news, apparently S&P fell 1% because the tech share got hit, as I told you guys. Uh, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, App, Alphabet all lost 2%. Um, Netflix down 5%. That was quite a big one, a big hit there. 
And um, of course, the main thing is still on the treasuries. Uh. So what happened is that you can see that uh, after ben, uh, this Jerome Powell came in to talk, it basically had artificially bring down the yield for some reason. But after that itself, right, okay, the market rebounded strongly yesterday on the yield. So, mm, so I will say this again, again and again. The market has to stay above, uh, stay below 1.5 to be safe. If the market bridges 1.5, anytime it's uptick to 1.55 to 1.6, there will be another round of selling in the equity market. So now the thing is on the new side is uh, right. Basically, the market seems to tell me the rally is a bit dead right now. Apparently, there's no much movement, no excitement, no earnings, nothing at all. So everything is pretty flat, and this actually could be a rising concern. So that is what the news are saying now. So I'll let you decide on what you take from here. All right. So what happened on Dow Jones yesterday? A quick recap. The opening price was between the two pivot, pivot one and pivot two. So naturally, above OP, the market will go up, right? But because the KSI was red in color, which means that if the market go to KTR plus one to KTR plus three, this will be a good time to sell the market and not buy. And shall the market bridges below OP, then of course, they are more towards the downside. Okay, that is what you can predict before the market start trading. And you look at it now, it's really, you know, following the T. So what happened is that when the market really um, bottom out here, CCR, CC, CCRY, red to yellow. You can see that, right? Color change, red to yellow. It came with a BMB and it came with the touch OP here. So it's a very good buy signal. And then the color change, that's why the price goes up. Now, when you go to KTR plus one, you should book some profit first, but you cannot short, right? Why? Because there's no color change there. There's no color change available. So after you take some profit, you can hang on your position and let it run. And incredibly, the market stopped perfectly at KTR plus two, right? Think about this, guys. The, all the KTR level are available at 7 a.m. in the morning and actually the Dow Jones really go there, stop there, pull back. Come on, guys. We are really having one of the best system in the world. I really tell you this. If we can really utilize this to our advantage and trust the system, then you will actually consider to activate a short right here because this is a very clear cut market hitting the KTR, then do a CCYR and come down. And of course, he followed by a zebra formation tell you that there will be a big movement coming soon. And in fact, that is how the Dow crashes down back to the opening price. So this is really incredible. So traders, it really, you know, you're looking to trade in the market, right? You can miss the buy because you're worried. But when it comes to the right time to sell, example, you should really take advantage of this. All right. So this is how we can actually utilize our understanding of the TWB system to trade and make money from the market in general. All right. So guys, I hope that you guys have made money from the Dow yesterday. I know that some of us has uh, is in profit now because we shorted the Dow. Congratulations to those who have shorted. All right. So let's us now look at the uh, indices right now and see whether do we have any, um, you know, uh, what do we have right now? So let me just go to the TA side. Okay, so this is the Dow Jones. Now today, the Dow Jones apparently has a little bit of a close uh, TA to watch out for. Now, first of all, there's a new BNB, right? So a new BNB means that it's a new RL resistance level and a new SL, right? So support level, okay? So that's why you must understand how we get these two lines. Then I realized that today's ML, uh, today's uh, so-called uh, MLP and the moving average, right? MA30, is about the same level. That's 31,329 level. So which means that it's the long, as long as Dow Jones cannot stay above 31,329, then traders be very careful. This may lead on to the sell. And of course, you can see right now, the Dow Jones is trading below the SL level of BNB. This is not good, okay? This is not good. Now, of course, we take the simple trend line drawing, those simple way of drawing trend line. This is a two trend line, two connection point. And when I extended this out, right, I realized that this is what happened this morning. The Dow Jones came down a little bit and rebounded pretty strongly. But if this is not going to hold the water, then there might be some selling. So the selling may bring the Dow Jones all the way down lower. And um, the first level that the Dow might be going will be 31,006. So I tell you guys up front first, the first level the Dow might be going for today is 31,006.
six level, okay? So that is the first technical point that I suspect the Dow will be going down. So traders uh, for today, based on what I'm looking at now, it doesn't look good. Trade uh, market may go into profit taking. But again, as you see from the NASDAQ chart itself, most of the NASDAQ counters do seem to be going towards the 20% level, right? So there should be a knee-jerk effect to bring it down there, cause a mayhem, cause a panic, and maybe on Friday, the market buy up before the non-fund payroll. Or if worse itself, the non-fund payroll put the really dent in the market, then Monday morning, we may have a big gap down causing the market to panic, things like that. It's all possible. So let's see whether how we uh, react accordingly, all right, traders? So I hope you guys got it clear to know that this is my personal take. Of course, if the Dow Jones do trades above, okay, if the Dow Jones do trade above, okay, uh, the MLP, that's 31,229, then the Dow Jones may go back up again to cover yesterday's gain. But uh, again, for my personal view is I don't think so. All right, I really don't think so. Okay, so let's see. Okay, guys, hope you like what I just share. Okay, all right. So that is the Dow Jones on the uh, conventional. Then this is the long tube Dow Jones movement. So no need to concern at the point now. Now this is the uh, mathematics. And I told you guys that this is my personal trend line that I draw. Okay, from the long time, time ago, I draw extended all the way. And the one extended from the bottom. And you look at it now, if you convert them together, you can see that it seems to be holding, all right? the market seem to be holding at that support level now. So as long as the Dow Jones do not basically break the trend line, we are okay. But if we break the trend line, then obviously the next level that Dow could be going, based on what I'm seeing now, is 30,686. So which means that if the Dow Jones uh, loses 31,000, then the next level could be going on to 30,686. That is based on trend line drawing, nothing to do with the KCP or the chocolate bar. This is just pure trend line levels, okay? All right. And weekly chart-wise as well, right? Okay, this is not very good sign now. Let me open up bigger for you. You can see that the MLP, the one in red level, that is the MLP that I draw. So now the Dow is actually now very near to the MLP level. Now, yesterday it was above, today it's below. So if the market loses this MLP level and start to trade below the OP, then this will create, create some panic in the market. And if that's going to be happening, the last time we, two, we see two black candle on the weekly chart, the market, sell, the, the market actually sold down another uh, 800 points later. So of course, um, I, we sort of want to see something happen like that. But if the market really closed uh, black candle for the week, especially uh, for this week itself, right, then careful traders, there is a possibility for the market to go down even lower next coming week, okay? All right, so that is the Dow Jones for you. So let's look at the Dow Jones for today. That's a quick one. Here we go. All right, I will take away the indicator, the ATH first. Okay, so let's look at the Dow Jones for today. All right, so for Dow Jones today, you can see pretty clearly the Dow Jones opening price is between the two pivots. So again, because the KSI happened to be red in color, if the market go to KTR plus one to plus three, look out for potential sell signal, okay? When you do a CCYR in the market now, or trading, basically, we basically let the market react and move. Then we look for time to shoot in with like a sniper. So we should wait. Now, if the market goes below OP, which is happening right now, then there's a good chance that the Dow Jones may be going towards the pivot two level. And that's 31,102, okay? 31,102. Earlier, it went out to 31,118 and it rebounded, right? So that means that there's still some artificial buying. But if the market later bridges the pivot two, then there's a chance for the Dow Jones to go and cover the KCB. And that's a level I told you, right? 31,006 level, okay? Now, if the market really goes down below 31,006 level the next few weeks, then there is a crazy potential for the Dow to go down to the 30,698, which is very near to what I just said regarding about the 30,600 level, right? So there is a possibility that the Dow may go down to 30,698 level, okay? So traders just... Be careful on that. 
anything is possible, okay? So I hope you guys um, get this uh, information from me and you guys will be able to trade according to plan, okay? All right, all cool on that. All right. Okay. So the, uh, again, I'm just sharing with you the 5% level, the 5% level, I right, just bring it back to you again. The 5% level for the Dow Jones is this price here. It's about 30,470. So which means that uh, when the Dow Jones do come down, if the Dow Jones really bridges the 31,000, then likely the Dow might be going down to the 5% level or the 95% Tau level, right? And that particular level is 30,470. So if the Dow Jones goes there, I will really appeal to traders who are shorting the market. You can consider to buy back some over there and also leave some trading stop. If the market rebound is kind of expected, it may go up by a, fair, a few percentage before, it, you know, before anything happen again. But at least you know that it's a level to watch out for and that's 30,000. All right, 470, okay? So this is a level to really... Uh, watch out for yourself, okay, traders. Okay, uh, sorry, I just trying to get myself live wired up. Something is delete. Okay, okay, something is wrong. My side, never mind. Continue. Okay, so that is the Dow Jones uh, sharing. So let's talk about. Eh, sorry the Nasdaq right now. Now the Nasdaq basically is terrible and you can see very powerful how MLP actually uh, was done back then. The market on fr uh, yesterday, I told you there's MLP. It's a very powerful MLP the day before and look at the way the Nasdaq hit the MLP, couldn't go higher, kiss it and immediately pulls back right down all the way. Now this is actually a very, very scary uh, TA here, the accuracy is ridiculously incredible accurate. So what will happen to the NASDAQ right now, there is a possibility for NASDAQ to continue its downside. So uh, where would NASDAQ be heading next, right? Where will be the next level? So likely we use the NASDAQ, we do the same thing, the uh, percentage way. Okay, moment, let me just do some reiterating first. Um, so this is the BM, the red line is a BMB. So the market broke below the BMB uh, support level already. So that is actually uh, not a good sign. So this is a BMB and the market broke below the support level already. So not a good sign. Then the MA is so far away. The MA now is at about 13,300. So it's going to be more downside, right? So let's say that we put in the MA uh, we put the, the, the all-time high level. We go put it back in the chart. So I'm going to insert the indicator. Okay, here we go. So now the market has actually loses the 95% level. You can see that the 95% level is over here, which happened to be the MLP of the day before. So that's why probably when the market failed to stay above the 95% level, that's why yesterday reversal hammer, reversal sell off, right? Exactly from the 95% mark. So that means that it should be going to the 90% mark. And that means the NASDAQ should be going to the 12,518 level. Uh, where are we now? We are 12,647. So I think likely there's a fairly good chance for the um, market to travel down to 12,518. That is the 90% level. No, I suspect that the, when the market comes there, there should be artificial rebound. There should be some artificial rebound uh, when the NASDAQ comes to that particular point, 12,518. 12, Okay, because you look at it now, we are also very near to the RSI at the lower end. So fairly good chance, uh, any, any um, weaker selling of the next few days, this will actually uh, spring the buyers into the market to buy and do some bottom picking. All right, so traders, I hope you guys are hold, still holding with me on this particular trade. Okay, so uh, that is the NASDAQ. So let's look at the gold market. Now, gold basically trying to recover. It was sold down to 1700 yesterday. And then after that, it rebounded very strongly above to 1720. But towards the end of the day, it fizzled out. All right. 
So now traders are all looking at the 1700. So previously it was 1800 as a support, now 1700. Okay, so you see, they keep on shifting their goalposts to, to present whatever they need to tell you. And they're telling you now there's a likely chance there'll be a lower level to go. And um, some charties are saying that it may go down further. So you can you can see this what actually happening. Okay. All right, you want to do SMP? Okay, I'll do that shortly. All right, for gold. So let's recap on gold first before we go to SMP 500. So this is what happened on the goal yesterday. Now, goal yesterday opened above the pivot one, right? So naturally, it should be going higher. But because the KSI was red in color, so it's biased to the sell side. So when gold breaks below OP, it's a sell. And the crazy part is if it goes below the pivot one, which is 1725, that means it should go down lower. And indeed, it really all manifested according to plan. So if you look at what I said yesterday, I did say that gold could be going down lower if you breach just the what's pivot level, right? So what you can see on the gold chart, the market has basically uh, stayed below OP most of the time. But the moment the market bridges the pivot one level, that was where gold collapsed now. Can you see that? So that's why we can we must always trust the system. As long as the system tells us what to do, we just have to follow. I think that is pretty safe. And you can see that if you believe in whatever you see in the KSI day chart and you just follow through, focus on the sell yesterday, Overall, you should be making good money, right? And we, I think we did. Like, we have been shorting the market for gold and we are very happy with that. Okay, so that is gold. Let's look at the gold's um, overall chart right now. Now, this is gold. Gold uh, today has rebounded a little bit at 1714. It's kind of expected for gold to do that. The MLP for gold today, let's bring it in. MLP is about 1724 region. All right, the MA is very far away. The MA is at 1784 region. So it's still a very distant uh, from here itself. Like, okay, a big distant. So where can go go down? If go basically comes down, there's a chance for you to go back down to reach the chocolate bar about 1697 level, right? 1697. Okay, so that is what will happen. Weekly chart wise is very clear. Go is on the way towards the 1689 level, that is the 61.8. That is a 61.8 on the gold. So traders, if you are looking to short gold, when the gold prices come down to 1689 level or 1690 level, that is a 61.8. Suspect that it be a touch and go, meaning the market may touch and then rebound. Okay, so traders, 1689, 1690, you can consider to buy back some of your position. If let's say you are short, in the market, okay? So I don't want you guys to press too hard on the short side because when the market press too hard, it can actually stage a rebound and this rebound can be surprisingly big, okay? So traders all clear on the gold market. All right, so let's look at today's gold, shall we? Now gold has recovered from the low end, it's trying to recover. So let's see the day chart will be better. So for day chart today, the opening price is between the two pivots. So ideally the way to construct this is that above OP, CCRY, look for buying itself, it should be able to go back to pivot one and that's 1720. But of course, if go later on, do pull back below OP, then the first level you will go will be the one nine, sorry, 1697 level, that is the first KCB. And of course, today pivot two is 1686. So mm -mm, the downside is all right, it looks pretty cool. But uh, if the market goes up, you go to KTR plus one to plus three, look out for CCYR instead, okay? So traders, uh, what you can do for gold is looking at all these numbers now to prepare yourself, okay? So that is gold for us. So there's a requirement to look at S&P 500. Let's do S&P right now. So S&P, in my opinion, has just broke below the trend line that I draw for some time. This is a trend line that I started with since March last year, extended to October last year. And then it, interestingly, it got supported in January this year. And now it seems to be telling me that the S&P 500 is now below the trend line and this is not a good sign. So two way to look at it. One way is that the positive way, maybe it will rebound and then causes the market to recover back to your MA30. But if the market continue to stay below OP, then seriously, there is a very good chance that the market may go down and it may go down to 3776 level. That will be the uh, chocolate bar level that I assume that the market might be going down, all right? What 3776. But of course, uh, for people who are into long side, 
okay, long side, okay, they may want to buy back low and then recover by the recovery trade, okay. Colin, if S&P rebounded, we're still in a trend line. <laughs> I wouldn't know, my friend. We just have to let the trend line decide and we just see the market. Lah. So at the moment now, it's below a trend line, meaning you can look at it. The opening price today is actually on the trend line. So if S&P 500 stays above the opening price of today, it means it's going to recover, right? But if the market stays below the opening price for today, that means it's below the trend line, then traders is likely there will be small selling to come. Okay. So I just hope that I clarify this without bringing you in circle because that is what I'm seeing from the chart. Now, this is my personal view. So, you know, it really depends on how you see it. Okay, so that is uh, what happened to gold and look at silver, right? Jumping a bit here and there, apology, but okay. Now, silver yesterday was brilliant. Look at it. I told you guys about this trend line and apparently yesterday silver did came down, but incredibly silver price touches that level and then rebounded. Oh my God, look at it. Look at it, the way it came down, the, the, the purple line, I did not, the pink, purple, violet line, I did not change, is there. And apparently beautifully, it came down, touches it perfectly and now rebounding. So this trend line is a very powerful trend line that uh, I will say that this will be very important to me when it's so powerful, it's so accurate, right? I better watch it closely because it may give me another reason to buy into silver soon. Okay, so yesterday I missed it. Never mind. Let's uh, look at it for the next few weeks and see whether can we get it cheaper and then we can buy from the market and prosper from that. Okay. Now crude oil, incre incredibly crude oil yesterday went up. So it went against all odds for me because we were all looking at that, right? For the yields. So maybe because the market really buys into the economy is recovering or they buy that, right? The dollar is, is going to be depreciated. So they just buy into that. So there's many, many reasons why, but still for today itself, right? Very clear. This is the MA30. As long as the crude oil stays above 59.75, the crude oil should be still going higher. So if the crude oil goes higher, that means that the inflation will go higher. And that means that right, Jerome Powell and team must again try to push it down. But if the market keep on buying on anticipation, then Jerome Powell has no choice. He has to come out and say that right, maybe this is a bit half now and they may actually have to uh, show sign of tapering or you know, hiking interest rates, okay? All right, now yesterday the Bitcoin was brilliant. Bitcoin again out of five trades, four went nicely, all gave profits. Of course, the profit was not big. Some of them give 300, some give more than 500. But overall, itself, as long as you see the KCX indicator, as long as you see it, you wait for color to change from red to yellow on a five minute chart, you should be able to make some money. All right, like I say, it should be able. So the only thing is that now we try to hope that AIMS can bring down the spread lower and we can actually you know, utilize this more often. Okay, so how about Bitcoin on its own now? Let's take a look, Bitcoin. Okay, here we go, Bitcoin. So Bitcoin basically has created a CCRY on the day chart. So logically today, Bitcoin will be a buy all right, be a buy as long as Bitcoin stay above OP. Bitcoin should be able to go to 53,246 level, right? Bitcoin. Now, the KSI is green in color. So let's say if the market do come down, if the market go to KTR to minus, K, minus three, do look out for buying opportunity. All right, that is the Bitcoin. So I suspect today Bitcoin will rechallenge the 53,246 mark. Okay, so traders be very careful on that. Okay, so basically I think I've come to the technical side of the market. If now I'm gonna go into the special chart, if you are not comfortable with the special chart sharing, you can leave right now. If not, give me 10 seconds for you to exit and I'll get some water before we move on to the special charts. Now special charts basically are um, alternate views, uh, meaning they don't go through the mainstream media. It's from their own personal perception. Uh, I get it out and then I share with you. So of course it may actually cause some confusion in the market because you know, some views will be totally different. And then some people may not be able to reciprocate it properly or they may, may not be able to relay properly and then cause some problem. All right, so this is the uh, US non-farm 
private payroll, that one in blue color. So obviously back in 2020, after the one virus, the market, the, the thing came down. Uh, we understand. But you can see that right all along itself, the movement has been quite in line. But recently, the, num the way it's moving is definitely going a bit off. And the discrepancy or the divergence between them is widening at a very alarming rate. So normally, it should be close by. So either that the market had to rush up all the way to meet up the S&P, uh, sorry, or, or rush up all the way to meet up to the to the Wilshire 5000. If not, it's uh, right, Wilshire 5000, right, market cap has to come back down to meet the uh, non-farm private sector. So that means that, right, if it comes down, it's going to be pretty drastic traders. So uh, last one over here is uh, basically this is the guy saying this in year 2000 we have cisco intel oracle trading at 200 p at the time we all say the same thing uh, it's ridiculous it's crazy but people just keep on buying and we were being labeled as being idiots here dumb people doesn't know that things have changed but of course after that okay we saw the three of them crashing down because it always happened like this so now yeah year 2021 21 years later now i'm hearing about tesla zelo square crispr Right, all these are trading at PE ratio 400. In fact, really crazy stuff. Tesla is really at thousand. So all you guys, again, if you guys want to reconsider that, then you should be very careful unless you know what I mean it's this time is different. So this is a very good chart that I plucked it out for you. History may not repeat itself, but it often rhymes. So this is how a chart will usually be formed is that it will be people buying from the top first and from buying from the deep. So last three years, four years, you don't hear people talking buying from the deep, but now you're hearing this. And of course, when the market goes higher and you're still enthusiastic to buy a lot of stuff, then be careful. You may not want to be the last person buying all this thing. Then of course, later on, there will be artificial support that we are seeing right now. And uh, if the market is so stabilized, it's good. It may go up high again. But if the market doesn't, then there will be some profit taking. And of course, the typical signs of worry will come in. And that is whereby it's going to be pretty good for us. Okay. All right. So thank you guys for today's MAO. I hope you enjoyed today's session. All right. Like I say, uh, I already given you my views on certain on the market. I really hope that you guys can really do well in your own trading. And uh, today is Thursday. So um, there'll be no, there's I mean, there is some data coming on Thursday. I can't remember what exactly it is, but tomorrow non fund payroll will be a big day for traders. So I will suggest that we be careful on that. Okay. You really don't want to be caught on the wrong side of the market. All right. So traders, thank you so much. Can you give me all the love that you can have from the group, from the, uh, the group chat? And of course I would love to see you guys once again. All right. Thank you guys. So, so you guys got to me a favor. Just give me all the thumbs up. All right. Okay, take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye.